Just got this in, so this is the Darwin FPV all-in-one flight control board. So what do you get with this board? Now this is an F411 flight control board with a BL Heli ESC capable of up to 15 amps of continuous current, 17 amps peak current. It's also got this little 16 volt, 220 farad, microfarad cap on there. So this is the S bus or UART number one. That's your S bus pad right there. Then there's your uh, uh, five volt and then your ground it's a little negative there so if you were going to hook up a like a free sky rxsr receiver there's your green wire to the s bus and then the five volt on the ground is self-explanatory now let's go down to the lower left corner of the board here we have our tx2 the camera, the video VTX, the ground, and we've also got a five volt here. So you're all ready to go with your video. Here we've also got RX2. Now this is great because you have access to RX2 and TX2, which means that if you wanna run full Crossfire protocol, you can with this. You could wire it right into there. You could also run it in S bus mode too if you want up here and just leave your camera and all that alone. But Again, the flexibility to do that is there for you. A few ways you can solder motors to this thing. So now you've got your motor four, motor three, one, two. We got the bigger pads there, but we've also got these pads here, which you, as you can see, there's this square or rectangular outline for it. That is for the motor plugs. You can solder them onto there. Now, obviously they don't come pre-soldered. That's either gonna be something you're going to hate or going to love, depending on what build you have. But they, uh, Darwin FPV has decided to leave that up to you. Let's take a look at what we get in the box. As you can see, we've got the motor plugs and XT30 cable. Now, the good thing about the motor plugs is at the very least, the way they have it laid out here, it makes it easy to not get it wrong. So, for example, if you try to put this thing on the wrong way, it's just not going to work. Like it fits in perfectly as long as you line it up with the outline. If I were to put it in backward, that doesn't work. As you can see, you're, you're just pushing against up one against up against the FET. So at least they've made it really easy to not make a mistake. Hopefully I can get this thing running on here. So, and then we'll do a flight review of this Darwin FPV all-in-one flight controller. So stay tuned for that in the next section. All right, so we've almost got all the motor sockets soldered on here. And I got to tell you, this is easily the hardest thing, one of the hardest things that I've ever had to solder. Um, I screwed up once. I accidentally crossed a whole bunch of bridges with it. Um, if, you, if that happens, here's what you do. Keep some of this on hand. This is solder wick. It will help you get clean it up so that way you can uh, try again and get it through the hole. What you want to do is... You want to just heat up the pin that way you get the pin nice and hot and the the uh, the solder just flows into the pad and look at that that's the way to do it that's the way you want to do it the next one that i would go on to do is for example say this middle one and i would try to do it from this end more from the right rather than the left that way if anything did get onto this side it would just be a little easier to clean up again i'm going to see if i could do this sometimes you cross it and if you do cross it it's not a big deal that's what we want we want some of it to flow from the iron right onto the pad and there you go. The third is the easiest peg because you don't have to worry about anything else around. I'm just going to touch the solder to the lead and let it flow into the pad all by itself. There we go and cut it off. I mean, okay, I know the end result here is not perfect, but it'll be good enough for what I'm going to use it for. And I'm satisfied with this. This is good enough to me. All right, so after I got the motor socket soldered in here, I went to work and got the video transmitter and the camera hooked up. That's been soldered to the board now. And I also got the Crossfire Nano receiver on here. So we're pretty much ready to close this up. I want to do a little bit of build reflection before I do that. The first thing I want to cover is going back to the motor sockets because some of you guys are going to say, John, why did you put the motor sockets on? You could have just direct soldered it is more efficient to skip the sockets and just go direct solder. And I did want to bring that up in case you were new and you might not have realized that, but I knew that 
before I did it and I chose repairability over a little bit more power and flight time. So with that out of the way, let's go to the next section and talk about what I did with the capacitor here. Now the cap was actually soldered underneath that was not going to work obviously with this frame. So instead it's going to just kind of be poking out the back here and I hope that'll work all right. Should work okay. Now, there, I could have gone another route with this. I didn't want to put it underneath because I needed the room for this Crossfire receiver. That wouldn't have really worked out too well if I put it underneath given the tightness of this build. But I could have taken the included XT30 and done like what they did on this model here and put the cap right on the XT30 leads. Generally, it's better to have the cap as close to the terminal as possible, but this would have been maybe a better compromise, just an idea, and I may end up doing that in the future, we'll see. This is only a two cell build, so you might not even need the capacitor, honestly, for a two cell battery, but I just wanted to be on the safe side, and I'm throwing one on there. Now this is running from, this white wire is running from there all the way to my video transmitter. And the reason that I did that is because this is really cool. You can control your uh, video transmitter from the Crossfire Nano. So this is my Tango 2 and I'm going to press menu and then I'm going to go into the Crossfire menu. Then I'm going to select XF Nano RX, really hard to see guys, I apologize. And then I'm going to go and check this out. Look at this. Absolutely awesome. It's I've got video transmitter controls there, VTX at the top. This is a feature of Crossfire. If you run a smart audio enabled video transmitter, your Nano RX can be wired to control it directly without going through the flight controller. And I want to make this crystal clear here. So when you see where this is, see where the antenna is? One two, three. You solder to this third port. That is output number four. And it only works if you solder it to here. And this is just going to go right up into your VTX. And that will give you your smart audio. That will give you the full control. And you don't have to worry about soldering it to the board. I'm going to get this all put together and we're going to go for a flight and see how it works. Before you fly, of course, you have to configure your flight controller firmware, and by default, it comes with beta flight, but I chose to flash Emu flight because I wanted to try it on this F411 flight controller, just see how it worked. Plus, I'm running a Whoop, and Emu flight is supposed to have some better stuff in it for Whoops. I just wanted to give that a shot. So if you want to follow along with me for this, go to, download Emu flight, and then go to the firmware flashing section of their configurator, Choose Maytech F411. Make sure you don't choose Maytech F411 RX or F411 SC. It's just a Maytech F411 flight controller. And we're, I'm running version 0.3.3. That's the most recent version as of January 2021. But anyway, if you want to continue with this flash process for Emu Flight, all you have to do is click load firmware once you have everything selected up here and just flash firmware. But we're not going to do that because I've already got it flashed and I can go ahead and connect to it. And we're going to go over some of my settings. So first let's go to the ports tab and we can see we've only got a couple UARTs here. Number one is disabled. We talked about that during the build because we're not using that for our receiver. But UART 2 where we have our crossfire receiver soldered. Now uh, for our configuration, let's go over this step by step here. So for the ESC and motor features, this is interesting. Uh, I have DSHOT 600. I'm also running an 8K, 8K PID loop, and that seems to be working fine with this board. But I will say that I struggled to flash the ESCs when I had changed it to DSHOT 300 and I was running beta flight. I had this really strange error in BL Heli Suite where the ESCs were appearing in and out with an error about uh, unknown or erased firmware. Don't know why that happened, but changing it back to DSHOT 600 worked fine. I tried to see if I could replicate the problem in Emu Flight by changing it to 300, and I didn't. So I, I really don't know what to say about that, but I felt like I should bring it up in case somebody runs into the same problem. But anyway, for my flying purposes, I'm running DSHOT 600 and 8K, 8K. I have motor direction is reversed because it is on this. I'm running props in reverse as well on the Beta 85. Accelerometer is on because I do like to fly stability. This is where you would set up your crossfire receiver. You just choose crossfire, and of course, uh, it's a serial based receiver. 
Oh, pretty basic down here. I have all this set up. Uh, D-Shot beacon configuration, you don't want to forget this. This is for your beeper because mine doesn't have a buzzer on it. Let's go to the uh, power and battery settings. Uh, make sure this, well, I, I run high voltage battery, so I have it set to 4.3 and minimum cell voltage 3.3. If you run high voltage uh, for uh, two cell batteries, you're gonna wanna set that to 4.3. Let's go to the receiver. Now, when you have this plugged in over USB, you can actually get power to your receiver. Like I'm, I don't have any battery plugged in, as you can see up here, but yet I'm, it, it will power the receiver, which is kind of nice. So you can test your receiver and make sure it's working all well without even needing a battery. Um, let's go to the modes tab, and we can see here that this is the way I have it set up. I like to put my beeper on a switch. That way when you press it, that'll buzz the motors. A battery does need to be plugged in to hear that. This is how I kind of have my on-screen display set up. I've got, you know, the craft name, the warnings. Since I run RSSI, I put my uh, line quality value here as well. Battery average voltage. This is all pretty run of the mill. If you've ever used anything like this before, Flight is very, very similar to Betaflight in terms of its configuration because they're it, it's based on the same code. So... Um, pretty much that's it uh, for the Emu Flight configuration. I want to move on to the ESC firmware that I chose. And you're not going to miss want to miss that because some good information there if you haven't heard of BlueJ ESC firmware. So we'll go over to that next. Before we continue with this section, I want to point out that BlueJ ESC firmware is completely optional. This is a great firmware if you want to do bi-directional D-Shot with RPM filtering and have more advanced ESC features. But if you're not interested in any of that and you don't need to go this route, uh, I was looking for it. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. So I wanted to check out how BlueJ would function on this board. And it works great. You know, this is a really great firmware for any board running BL Heli S. So if this is something you're interested in, uh, continue watching. If not, you can go ahead and skip this section because the stock uh, ESC firmware on this board works just fine. But let's go ahead and connect with BlueJ and see what we've got here. So if we press read setup in the lower right hand corner, all the ESC should come in. And this is our ESC identifier, SH50. Now this is important you can use this video as a reference. In case anything ever happens to any of these ESCs, that's your identifier. You always know it. Um, so let's go over what I configured here. Uh, ESC number one is set to reversed. ESC number four is set to reverse, and that matches my beta flight configuration. If you remember, we have the motors set to reverse there as well, and this is what you want to match, especially in my case where I'm running a whoop with the reverse prop setup. Uh, so let's go ahead and see how you would flash these. Uh, obviously, I'm running the firmware, but yours will, won't say that. Yours will say you're running basic 16.7. So you would just go to flash all, and the target will automatically be picked for you, but verify that it's SH50. I, the version today was 0.10, so I just went with that. And I chose 48 kilohertz, and you might want to do that because 48 kilohertz, I've had really good luck running 48 kilohertz. Everything's working good. I have no complaints, absolutely no complaints with the BlueJ firmware. And once you know you did it right, you hear that little startup tone. So, all right, that's it. You've got EmuFly, you've got BlueJ firmware, maybe, maybe not, and I'm, I'm ready to go fly, and I'm ready to actually fly this thing. Well, the Darwin FPV all-in-one flight control board swap was a success. The Beta 85 Pro 2 is flying better than ever. I got several packs in today, didn't have any problems. Uh, Emu Flight is really smooth on this flight controller, along with the BlueJ ESC firmware. Didn't have any issues at all. In fact, I suffered a pretty crazy crash where a propeller flew off of my uh, little quad here because I didn't have it secured down well enough, and it just went all over, hit the roof, hit, hit the ground. I picked it back up, still kept on going. So, you know, I, I, how's the long term on the board? I don't know. If something does happen, I will definitely update you guys on that. But I'm already impressed because, hey, this board failed within the first few flights when I got it from Beta FPV. The board was just junk. And I talked about that in my review of this thing, how the board just didn't last. So I'm already impressed. Uh, the board is much beefier than that original board. It's meant to handle up to three cell. It's got a much better peak current. We, we went over all that. So I'm having high hopes for this board and to actually have more fun with this 
in the future. So let me just say thank you for sticking all this way if you watched the entire video, or even if you picked up some tidbits watching this um, as you go through your adventure to either convert to this board or perhaps you're thinking about buying it. I hope that helped you out. I also want to say thank you to Darwin FBV who actually sent the board out to me and I purchased their Johnny, the Darwin 79, a 1440mm model, and they just threw the board in for free and they said, look, we just want to know it's a, it's a new product, we're a pretty new company and we want to see what you think of this all-in-one board. No pressure to do a review or anything like that, they just, they just wanted some feedback. But the board turned out to be pretty good, so I think this is worth uh, sharing with you guys in a video. I've got a link to the board down in the description below if you want to check it out. And um, yeah, with that being said, that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And that's it. You guys have a great day. I'm going to go do some flying with this thing, and you all take care.